Welcome to the Inspiring Illustrations channel. The Story of King Josiah Who was Josiah in the Bible? To fully understand the reign of Josiah and its significance, it is essential to consider the broader historical and spiritual context of the time. Josiah ruled the kingdom of Judah from around 640 to 609 BC, during a tumultuous period. Judah had experienced a series of kings, some righteous and others deeply corrupt. Two generations before Josiah, his grandfather, King Manasseh, was one of the most wicked kings in the history of Judah. Manasseh reigned for 55 years and was notorious for leading the people into idolatry, child sacrifice and sorcery, 2 Kings 21 verses 1 to 9. The Bible mentions that Manasseh shed very much innocent blood, 2 Kings 21 verse 16, indicating that his reign was filled with violence and moral decay. Manasseh's son, King Ammon, followed in his footsteps, further deepening Judah's moral decline, 2 Kings 21 verses 19 to 26. Ammon's reign was short, as he was assassinated by his own officials after only two years on the throne. This left the throne to Josiah, who ascended as king at the mere age of eight. During this time, the spiritual condition of Judah was dire. The nation had largely departed from the covenant established with Yahweh, embracing pagan practices and false gods. The temple in Jerusalem, which was supposed to be the center of worship to the one true God, had become defiled with idols and pagan altars. Judah's political situation was also precarious. The powerful Assyrian Empire still exerted influence over the region, although its power was beginning to wane. Amid this spiritual and political chaos, Josiah's reign would mark a turning point in Judah's history, bringing significant religious reforms. Although Isaiah's prophetic ministry occurred long before Josiah's reign, his prophecies played a significant role in the spiritual foundation upon which Josiah built his reforms. Isaiah lived about 100 years earlier, and his ministry primarily focused on calling Judah back to faithfulness to God while warning of impending judgment if the nation continued to stray. Isaiah's prophecies not only condemned the rampant idolatry and injustice of the time but also offered glimpses of hope, particularly through the promise of a coming Messiah and the eventual restoration of Israel, Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7, 11 verses 1 to 10. Josiah, whose reign marked the beginning of a brief period of spiritual renewal in Judah, was indirectly influenced by Isaiah's teachings. The warnings of Isaiah and other prophets like Micah and Zephaniah would have echoed throughout Judah during Josiah's youth. Their calls for justice, repentance, and return to God likely shaped Josiah's worldview, even as the nation was steeped in idolatry and moral decay. In this video, we will explore the exciting story of Josiah, examining everything the Bible reveals about this prominent king of Judah. We will trace his journey from beginning to end, unraveling the extraordinary work he undertook, the restoration of values, the fight against idolatry, and the lessons we can extract from his life. Before we proceed, we would like to extend a special invitation to new viewers. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications so you do not miss any of our Bible studies. Let us begin a detailed analysis of Josiah's story, exploring how his actions and reforms impacted the kingdom of Judah and left a lasting legacy in biblical history. The name Josiah has a Hebrew origin and is derived from the words Yeshua or Yosia. These words mean the Lord brings salvation, God saves, or Jehovah heals. This name is not just a collection of letters, but carries deep spiritual meaning. It reflects the belief in divine intervention and healing that comes from God, being related to hope and faith in divine salvation. In biblical tradition, Names often carry deep meanings and are chosen to reflect desired or expected characteristics. In the case of Josiah, the name symbolizes trust in God's ability to save and heal. This meaning is particularly relevant when considering the life of Josiah, the king of Judah, who is remembered for his religious reforms and his commitment to restoring true worship of God. One of the most significant verses about Josiah is found in 2 Kings, chapter 23, Verse 25. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. 2 Kings, chapter 23, verse 25, 
New International Version. This verse highlights the uniqueness of Josiah in his total devotion to God, something that set him apart from all the other kings of Judah. He not only followed God's commandments but did so with his entire being, demonstrating a deep and comprehensive commitment to faith and divine law. Now let's take a detailed look at the story of Josiah, starting with the context in which he ascended to the throne. Imagine a land plunged into darkness, where hope seems lost and evil runs rampant. Now imagine a boy, still very young, suddenly placed in the role of leading an entire nation. It seems like something out of a fairy tale, right? But this is no fantasy. This is the true story of Josiah, one of the most remarkable kings in the history of Israel. Our story begins in the kingdom of Judah, around 640 years before Christ. Once a glorious nation under the reigns of David and Solomon, Judah had fallen far from its former glory. The kingdom was on the brink of spiritual and moral collapse. Most of the kings who came after Solomon strayed from God's path, leading the people into idolatry and injustice. It was in this turbulent world that a boy named Josiah was born. He was the son of King Ammon and the grandson of King Manasseh, two of the most wicked rulers Judah had ever known. The Bible spares no words in describing the character of Ammon. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. 2 Kings, Chapter 21 Under the reign of Ammon, and before him, his father Manasseh, corruption and idolatry had taken deep root in Judah. The landscape was dotted with altars to foreign gods, while the Lord's temple in Jerusalem, once the pride of the nation, lay in ruins, neglected and desecrated. The people had strayed so far from God that even the book of the law, given by Moses, had been lost and forgotten. It was in this atmosphere of spiritual decay that young Josiah grew up. His father, Ammon, continued the destructive practices of his grandfather Manasseh. The Bible tells us. He followed completely the ways of his father, worshipping the idols his father had worshipped, and bowing down to them. He forsook the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and did not walk in obedience to him. But Ammon's reign was short and tumultuous. After just two years on the throne, he fell victim to a palace conspiracy. The Bible records. The officials of Ammon conspired against him and assassinated the king in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against King Ammon, and they made Josiah, his son, king in his place. And so, in a twist of fate that no one could have predicted, young Josiah, at eight years old, was crowned as the new king of Judah. The Bible records this memorable occasion. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 31 years. 2 Kings, Chapter 22 Can you imagine? A child king, ruling a nation in crisis. It seemed like a recipe for disaster. How could a boy, born into a line of wicked kings, possibly change things? How could he find his way back to God when everything around him pointed in the opposite direction? The challenges faced by young Josiah were enormous. He inherited a kingdom steeped in idolatry, with a neglected temple and a forgotten law. The people had turned their backs on God, following the example set by their previous kings. It would take a miracle to set things right. But, as we will see, God had great plans for this young king. Josiah's reign would mark the beginning of one of the most remarkable transformations in Israel's history. An unlikely heir, born amidst corruption and idolatry, was about to embark on a journey that would change the course of a nation and leave a lasting legacy of faith and obedience to God. Now you may be wondering, how does an eight-year-old boy govern a kingdom? The truth is, he doesn't, at least not in the beginning. During Josiah's childhood and teenage years, the affairs of state were likely managed by a group of advisors. These were not just any advisors. Among them were likely men like Hilkiah, the high priest, and Shaphan, the scribe, who would later play crucial roles in Josiah's reforms. These God-fearing men must have had a profound influence on the young king. They planted seeds of faith that would blossom in the years to come. Although the Bible does not provide specific details about Josiah's education, we can imagine that he was taught about Israel's ancient traditions and the teachings of the prophets. 
As Josiah grew, so did his curiosity and interest in the things of God. He must have heard stories about his ancestors, great kings like David and Solomon, who led the nation during times of prosperity and devotion to God. Perhaps he wondered why Judah had fallen so far and what could be done to restore it to its former glory. These early years were a time of learning and preparation for Josiah. Though he may not have made major decisions for the kingdom, he was absorbing knowledge and wisdom. He was developing a character that would soon surprise everyone. As Josiah approached adolescence, he began to take a more active role in governing. His youth, which might have seemed like a disadvantage, turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Unlike his father and grandfather, Josiah had not been corrupted by years of idol worship and unjust rule. He was a blank slate, ready to lead Judah in a new direction. The stage was set for an incredible turnaround. A young king, raised amidst idolatry but guided by godly counselors, was about to embark on a journey that would transform not only his life but the entire kingdom of Judah. In the eighth year of his reign while he was still young, he began to seek the God of David, his father, second book of Chronicles, chapter 34, verse 3. Think about that for a moment. Josiah was 16 years old, still a teenager, when he made the personal decision to seek God. This wasn't merely following the crowd or doing what he was told. It was a genuine desire to know and follow the Lord. We can imagine young Josiah spending hours studying ancient writings, conversing with priests and prophets, trying to understand the history of his people and their relationship with God. He learned about the covenant God made with Israel, the laws he gave through Moses, and the consequences of the disobedience his people were facing. As Josiah grew in knowledge and understanding, his determination to restore true worship of God in Judah also grew. When he was 20 years old, he felt ready to make some major changes. The Bible tells us. In the twelfth year of his reign, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the Asherah poles, and the carved idols, 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, verse 3. Josiah wasn't content with merely a personal change, he wanted to transform the entire nation. He began by tearing down the altars and idols that had been set up throughout Judah. This was no small task. Many people had grown up with these idolatrous practices and considered them normal. But Josiah was determined to remove everything that hindered true worship of God. His reforms didn't stop at the borders of Judah. The Bible tells us that Josiah extended his efforts of purification to other parts of Israel as well. In the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, and as far as Naphtali, and in the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and the Asherah poles and crushed the idols to powder and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem, 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. This was a bold move. These areas were technically under the control of the Assyrian Empire, which had conquered the northern kingdom of Israel years before. But Josiah felt responsible for purifying the entire land that God had promised to Israel. As we read about Josiah's actions, we can see his courage and conviction growing. He wasn't merely going through the motions or making superficial changes. He was committed to completely transforming the spiritual landscape of his kingdom. But the greatest test of Josiah, and his most significant discovery, was still to come. In the 18th year of his reign, when he was 26 years old, Josiah undertook a project that would change everything, the restoration of the Temple of the Lord, the Great Reform. As we delve deeper into the reign of Josiah, we see that his reforms were comprehensive and far-reaching. They touched every aspect of life in Judah, from religious practices to social structures and even the economy. Let's explore these reforms in more detail. Josiah's religious reforms were at the heart of his mission to bring Judah back to God. As mentioned earlier, he began by tearing down the high places and idols. But his efforts went far beyond that. The Bible gives us a detailed account of his actions in the second book of Kings, chapter 23, verses 4 and 5. The king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the priests next in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal, Asherah, and all the starry hosts. 
He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and those around Jerusalem. Those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and moon, to the constellations, and to all the starry hosts. This passage shows the thoroughness of Josiah's reform. He was not satisfied with merely removing the visible symbols of idolatry. He also dealt with the people who were leading others astray. This was a crucial step because it addressed the root of the problem, not just its symptoms. Josiah also took steps to centralize worship in Jerusalem, as God had commanded. This was important because the scattered high places had become centers of idolatrous practices. By bringing all worship back to the temple in Jerusalem, Josiah hoped to ensure that people were worshiping God in the right way and in the right place. One of the most powerful symbolic acts of Josiah's reform was the destruction of the altar at Bethel. This altar had a long history of idolatry, dating back to the time when the kingdom was divided. By destroying it, Josiah was making a statement, the time of division and false worship was over. It was time for all of God's people to return to true worship. Perhaps the greatest achievement of Josiah's religious reforms was the restoration of the celebration of Passover. The Bible tells us in the second book of Kings, chapter 23, verses 21 to 23. The king gave this order to all the people, celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in this book of the covenant. Neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. This Passover celebration was more than just a religious observance. It was a powerful symbol of the nation's return to God and the renewal of their covenant relationship with Him. Social and Political Reforms Josiah's reforms were not limited to religious practices. He understood that true devotion to God should impact every area of life. As a result, he implemented significant social and political changes. One key aspect of these reforms was the establishment of justice and equity in the land. Josiah likely restructured the judicial system to ensure that it was aligned with God's law. We can imagine him appointing judges who feared God and instructing them to judge fairly, without partiality. This would be in line with the instructions found in Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verses 18 to 20. Appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. Josiah also took steps to protect the vulnerable in society. The Law of Moses placed great emphasis on caring for the poor, widows, orphans, and foreigners. We can imagine Josiah implementing policies to ensure that these groups were treated with compassion and received the support they needed. For example, he may have enforced the Law of Gleaning, which required farmers to leave part of their harvest for the poor to gather. We find this law in Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 9 and 10. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord your God. Economic Prosperity Although the Bible does not provide specific details about Josiah's economic policies, we can infer that his reign was a period of prosperity for Judah. The stability brought about by his reforms would have created favorable conditions for economic growth. The centralization of worship in Jerusalem would have stimulated trade in the capital. Pilgrims coming to celebrate festivals would have brought business to local merchants. The relative peace during Josiah's reign would have made trade routes safer, encouraging commerce with other nations. We also see evidence of economic prosperity in Josiah's ability to fund large-scale projects such as the restoration of the temple. This suggests that the kingdom's finances were in good shape, allowing for significant investments in public works. The impact of Josiah's reforms was profound and far-reaching. 
The Bible offers a remarkable commendation of Josiah in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. This verse positions Josiah as one of the greatest kings in Israel's history, surpassing even figures like David and Solomon in his complete devotion to God and his law. However, despite the greatness of Josiah's reforms, the Bible gives a somber note. In 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 26 and 27, we read, Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burned against Judah because of all that Manasseh had done to arouse his anger. So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from my presence as I removed Israel, and I will reject Jerusalem, the city I chose, and this temple about which I said, There shall my name be. These words indicate that although Josiah's reforms were genuine and comprehensive, they were not enough to completely reverse the judgment God had decreed against Judah due to the accumulated sins of previous generations. Still, Josiah's reforms had a lasting impact. They provided a period of spiritual renewal and a return to God that benefited all the people of Judah. Most importantly, they set a standard of obedience and devotion that would be remembered and valued, even in the difficult times to come. The period during Josiah's reign, often referred to as the Golden Age, was marked by notable prosperity and stability in Judah. This era was not limited to spiritual renewal but also encompassed significant political, social, and economic improvements. Josiah's leadership extended far beyond the religious sphere, touching all aspects of national life. His administration was characterized by just and equitable governance, aligned with the principles of the Law of Moses. Socially, Josiah's reforms had a profound impact. The elimination of idolatry and pagan practices was not just a religious shift but a cultural transformation. Practices like temple prostitution and child sacrifice, which had infiltrated society during previous reigns, were eradicated. This resulted in a significant improvement in the quality of life and social cohesion. The renewed emphasis on the Law of Moses also led to greater attention to the care of the poor, widows, orphans, and foreigners. The Book of Deuteronomy, which likely was part of the Book of the Law discovered during Josiah's reforms, contains numerous instructions on caring for the needy. The End of an Era Despite the greatness of Josiah's reign, it ended tragically. In 609 BC, when Josiah was 39 years old, he was killed in battle against the Egyptians at Megiddo. The Bible records this event in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verses 20 through 24. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho king of Egypt went up to fight at Carchemish on the Euphrates, and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What quarrel is there, king of Judah, between you and me? It is not you I am attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him but disguised himself to engage him in battle. He would not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but went to fight him on the plains of Megiddo. Archers shot King Josiah, and he told his officers, Take me away, I am badly wounded. So they took him out of his chariot, put him in his other chariot, and brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his ancestors, and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him. Josiah's death was a turning point for Judah. With his death, the kingdom lost its last great reforming king. The people deeply mourned for Josiah, recognizing the importance of his loss. The prophet Jeremiah, who had begun his ministry during Josiah's reign, composed laments for the fallen king, 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 25. After Josiah's death, Judah entered a period of decline. His successors failed to maintain the reforms he had instituted, and the people quickly reverted to their old ways. Within a few years, the Babylonians would conquer Jerusalem, destroy the temple, and take many of the people into exile. The story of Josiah is a powerful testimony to the impact that one person, fully devoted to God, can have on an entire nation. Despite being born into a line of wicked kings, 
Despite the corruption and idolatry surrounding him, Josiah chose to seek God and lead his people back to righteousness. His reforms touched every aspect of life in Judah, religious, social, political, and economic. He tore down idols, restored true worship, implemented just laws, cared for the vulnerable, and brought prosperity to the land. In many ways, Josiah's reign was a return to the ideal of what God always wanted for his people. However, Josiah's story also serves as a sober reminder. Even the most comprehensive reforms and the most sincere repentance cannot always undo the consequences of years of sin and disobedience. While Josiah's reforms brought a period of revival and blessing to Judah, they could not ultimately prevent the judgment that God had decreed. Yet, Josiah's legacy continued. His example of total devotion to God would inspire many during the difficult years of exile that followed. The rediscovery of God's law during his reign ensured that it would be preserved and valued, even in a foreign land. Reflecting on the story of Josiah, we are left with challenging questions. How can we, like Josiah, choose to seek God even when the culture around us pulls in the opposite direction? How can we work to bring positive change in our communities and nations? And how can we ensure that our legacy, like Josiah's, points others to God long after we are gone? Josiah's story reminds us that one person, fully committed to God, can make a tremendous difference. It challenges us to examine our own lives and ask, are we living with the same kind of total devotion that characterized Josiah's life and reign? The tragic end of Josiah's reign marked the beginning of a turbulent period for the kingdom of Judah. Although Josiah's reforms had a profound impact, the events that followed demonstrated the fragility of those changes when not deeply rooted in the hearts of the people. Josiah's successors did not follow his example of faithfulness to God. His sons, Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim, are described in scripture as doing evil in the eyes of the Lord. This illustrates a sad reality. Even the godliest example of a leader is not always enough to guarantee the continuation of faith in future generations. Nevertheless, Josiah's legacy was not entirely lost. The seeds planted during his reign, the renewed emphasis on the law, the purification of worship, the centrality of Jerusalem, continued to bear fruit in the centuries that followed. These reforms helped shape post-exilic Jewish identity and laid the foundations for the forms of Judaism that would emerge in the Second Temple period and beyond. The rediscovery of the Book of the Law during Josiah's reign had a particularly lasting impact. It reintroduced the people to their spiritual heritage and the requirements of the covenant with God. This revival of knowledge and observance of the law would become crucial during the exile, when the people of Judah, deprived of the Temple and the Promised Land, would have to rely on the scriptures to maintain their faith and identity. Josiah's story teaches us several important lessons. The importance of personal faithfulness to God. Josiah showed that one individual committed to God can make a significant difference in their nation and generation. The value of returning to scripture. The rediscovery of the book of the law was the catalyst for Josiah's reforms, reminding us of the central importance of God's word in our lives and societies. The need for internal change. Though Josiah's reforms were comprehensive, they failed to completely change the hearts of the people, reminding us that true transformation must come from within. The long-term impact of faithful actions, even though the immediate results of Josiah's reforms were short-lived, his legacy continued to influence God's people for generations. The fragility of human success, Josiah's tragic end reminds us that even the most godly leaders are fallible and that our ultimate trust must be in God not in human beings. As we reflect on Josiah's life, we are challenged to consider our own walk of faith and the legacy we are building. How can we, like Josiah, seek God with all our hearts and work to bring reform and renewal in our spheres of influence? May we, like Josiah, be remembered as those who sought to do what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and may our impact extend far beyond our own lives, positively influencing future generations.